Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week I'm gonna be revisiting the Sega Dreamcast. And if you guys happened to see about two weeks ago, I published a video on the brand new DC Digital Hardware 2. So this is the newest version of the DC Digital. And uh, simply put, it gives you HDMI out of your Dreamcast. But in addition to that, it gives you really high resolutions up to 1440p and it's got lots of nice features for scan lines and uh, interpolation that the older version just simply doesn't have. So two weeks ago I covered how to do this installation from scratch on a completely you know untouched Dreamcast but there are many people out there that have the older DC Digital and are interested in upgrading. And I've gotten a lot of emails since that video about just how to do that. And so I figured what I'd do this week is a, just a short follow-up video on how to take a console that already has the older DC Digital installed and how you can upgrade it so that you have the uh, latest version installed. All right, so let's take this thing apart and let's get started. Okay, so I've got the Dreamcast here and I already tested it off camera just to make sure that the original DC Digital install was working and it is so everything is working perfectly i would definitely recommend that before going forward with anything else um so i've taken it apart and you can see that it has a pretty similar set of modifications that i did uh, in my last video so um it's got a bat 85 diode installed here this is voltar's mod where you can use a cr2032 battery instead of the rechargeable ml2032 batteries um, it's also got a knock to a fan installed, so this is a lot quieter than the original fan. Um, and for now, I've just put in a generic GD-ROM drive just so that I can do this testing. It had some kind of optical disc emulator that I've actually never seen before. Um, I wasn't entirely sure how to use it, so I figured, all right, let me just put in a normal drive and make sure it's working. Um, and then finally, here's the port, and you can see that whoever did this install actually did a really nice job. This is a very clean installation here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing apart and um, you really don't need anything other than a Phillips screwdriver. So I'll be back in a second and we're gonna have a look at the motherboard. Okay, so now we've disconnected the motherboard from everything else and um, you can see that the flex cable install is really well done. Whoever did this installation did a great job. They cleaned up all of their work and uh, yeah, very nice overall. So as I mentioned about two weeks ago, the flex cable is identical here as compared to the one used in the new DC Digital. So we actually can leave this flex cable as it is. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just open this up <clears throat> and kind of tilt it to the side like so. And we're gonna just lift this flap here and disconnect the flex cable. And so you can see that there are um, three cables, uh, three wires installed. So one is over here on reset, and then these two are on R601 and R602. So this is very much the same as what's done on the new DC Digital uh, hardware too. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead with my uh, soldering iron, and I'm just gonna disconnect it from these three points. All right, so now these two are totally separate from each other. Okay, and from here, what we're gonna do now is um, I'm gonna take this antenna off. I believe I could use the same antenna on both um, the one and the two, but uh, I already have the other antenna, so I'm gonna go ahead and just stick to that and keep all this stuff together. So now from here, we're just gonna go ahead and flip it over, disconnect these two screws. Like that, that should be good enough. And there we go. So now this one can be set aside. Okay, so I have gone ahead and taken the new DC Digital 2 and installed it in the exact same place that the original one was. Um, as you can see, they are literally the same physical dimensions. So as long as the opening over here is good and your drill holes are consistent, then it should just be a drop-in replacement. You just put it back in and uh, attach the two screws and the nuts to get everything secured. And that's really all there is to it as far as reattaching the new um, board. I did want to mention a few things though. 
Um, you can see that there's three pads over here. These are P1, P2, and Reset. These are exactly the same as the pads that are on the older DC Digital. So technically, I could have just taken those wires and reconnected them over here, and I'd be good to go. Uh, that being said, I do have this flex cable here that came with the installation, so I'm actually going to go ahead and just use this. But I didn't have to. I could have also just taken those wires and soldered them to these points. You'll notice over here there's also a pad called OPT, Option. And this is for um, the uh, GDEMU and I think also the Terra Onion Mode op optical disc emulators. Um, you can control the behavior of those ODEs by soldering a wire from here to the GDEMU. Um, so yeah, I just figured I'd mention that, but, um, but otherwise, again, it's a drop-in installation as far as the board is concerned. Now, I did decide to take the new antenna and install it right here. So all you've got to do is just place it into the socket right here, and then just find a nice little spot for it and stick it into place just like that. There's plenty of extra wire here and it'll just kind of tuck in just like that. All right, so now let's go ahead and finish up this installation by soldering on the flex cable. All right, so now we're gonna do the soldering of the um, secondary flex cable, and it's gonna hit most of the same points that we saw with the original install. So specifically, we're going to tack it on over here with R601 and R602. And I'm just going to add some flux and make sure those connections are solid. Okay. And then at this point, we do a little bend. And we're going to solder onto this side of the tantalum capacitor right here. Okay, and then the final connection is for reset. And you can see reset right over here uh, next to this little arrow right here. Okay, so that's all set. Now let's go ahead and finish up the install. All right, so everything is plugged back in. So now let's go ahead and power on the console and see if everything works. Okay, looking good here. All right, everything seems to be loading up properly. Um, so the final thing I need to do is just go into the DC digital menu and make sure that everything's looking good there. So to do that, you go into the memory card and you hold the two triggers, X, A, and start. And it looks like that works. We're now in the DC digital menu. So if we go down to system, and if we go to self-test, and yeah, it looks like we have hearts on all of the different signals. So that means that our wiring is still good, um, which you know is important, like it was good beforehand, but who knows, like maybe after disconnecting everything and reconnecting, a connection could potentially get loose. So you always wanna test that afterwards just to make sure that the flex cable install is good. But yeah, it looks like all of our flex cables are fine and uh, this DC Digital is ready to go. So yeah, that's it for this week's video. I'm sorry it was a short one, um, but I thought it was an important follow-up because I did get a lot of emails asking about how to do this conversion from one to two. And um, yeah, if you guys are, like this kind of content, then consider subscribing. I have videos out every week. And of course, if you have a console that you need repaired or modified, you can reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.